Hi all, it's Trainer of Day here, and we are playing a game known as Tundra. Hey, remember back when I played Foundation? No? Okay, doesn't matter. In the description of that, I teased that I was going to be playing another post-apocalyptic game, except with the instead of being desert, it's going to be snow. That isn't this game. I thought it was this game. I was thinking like another game I'm going to do let's play on called Icy. It's I think it's like a point-and-click adventure survival thing. But, this is something different, and I gave it a try just to see what's up, and I kind of liked it. I haven't gone all the way through with it. I barely even know what it's about. It's like it involves a lot of reading, most of it a skip, just to see what's if there's actually any gameplay at all. Or I'm just going to be doing Trey story time. So, you, luckily we're not doing that. It's not Trey story time. There's actually some gameplay later on with some choices. Probably some moral stuff. Moral, moral choices and, and probably logic puzzles. Best experience in Chrome on a computer. That's Chrome. This is a computer. I hope it's a computer. Avoid using the back button. Well, I did the back button trying to exit the game and start going completely weird. So, probably, yeah, sounds are like using this time. Let's engineer the test. Uh, oh, gosh. I'm scared, guys. It's this is all glitchy and such. We're getting started. Where are you now? Wait, what? You're walking. Were you asleep? Did you sleepwalk? Where are you? It's all white, man. That's all I see. You don't remember. No, wait. You're Dimitri. <gasps> I'm Dimitri, guys. How you ended up is, is blur, but you most definitely know who you are. These aren't my clothes! Oh wait, these aren't my clothes, my favorite black hoodie. And it's cold right now, the AC's turned up, and it's a winter game, so it's cold. Where's the thing? The last thing you remember is that we had dinner here with some friends, and it got like, again, a short walk home, and as if you just took a look at your shoes and something changed, looked up and it was cold, windy, and Hostile and white. It's, it's, it's white. Even if you're colorblind, I think you also agree that it's white. Trying to understand where you are is hard in this complete whiteness. You shiver. You wear some kind of gray overalls. Your name is stitched on them. It's stick and it doesn't keep <coughs> cold out. <coughs> Maybe there's something in the compartments. You dig in the deep compartments. And managed to fish out some gloves and a beanie. As a child, you visited places like this before. Hard, cold places that provide no little, no shelter and stuff at the tundra. Temperature animals and hunger and weariness are your great enemies in a place like this. On a tundra. Yeah. The snow isn't that deep, and you feel a permafrost through the soles of your shoes as you traverse across the landscape. You try to warm your cheeks with your back of your hand and beginning to f and feel the beginning of a beard. Did you shave before dinner? Irina doesn't like you in a beard. You look gross and ugly. Ugh, I need to shave myself, honestly. I've just been working out. I need to shave. No landmarks. Nothing to rest on. Nothing to eat. No help in sight. And no hope. From where you live is approximately 5... 5th Trey Gamer 58. Oh. Miles to the closest... From your live is the closest to some location. You couldn't have walked that far. Is I mean to worry how long have we been gone? Like, finally you think you see something. Or you're going insane from the cold. It's hard to distinguish exactly what it is. Might it be help or a mere mirage? Your stomach growls and you're fussy and you manage to find a little more energy somewhere deep inside of you. And push on. There's a tree. It's a tree, a naked tree, and all alone, just like you. This is the way of a small portion and hope you try to survive on. Is the, and the hope you're trying to survive on is depleting faster than you can manage. You've hoped to refill it here at this tree. Eat the bark! You bend down, scooping some snow and try to quench your first. But it tastes off. Like disgusting, and you vomit immediately. There is something in the snow. The tree provides no shelter and sustenance of any kind for selling feet. How? Or would it work? Dead tree would be the aid you seek. The tree trunk seems to have a small opening. At this point, desperation, you'll try anything. As you of your pockets have you but digged, your hand is swallowed of the hole that at first can strike you as deep. 
They might be some sort of danger in size. Oh, my arm! Um, instead, you're not in a position to be picky. You feel something, you grab them, pull up your arm from the depth. Blah, 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 blah. It's an old plastic cover, probably not working, somewhat dirty radio is now in your hands. I'm sorry, I'm reading this wrong. I have to look at you guys and read this at the same time. The plate of hope is yet... Wait. That plate of hope is filled yet again. Help! Wait, wait, I need a good thing. Here's the water bottle I used while I was work. Help! You scream for help, but the darn thing doesn't seem to be working. You fiddle with the dials, and even though you get some small static, it quickly fades. Night is coming, and a tundra is a dangerous place during the day, and even more so at night. You decide to spend night at the tree. You don't sleep at night. It's impossible in the cold. You just rub your arms to your chest, just trying to survive. Dawn. At this point, you feel much easier to name a few cold parts that haven't that aren't frozen solid from the cold. Your entire body might shatter if it was to hit a concrete floor. You try another scoop of snow, but the same thing happens again: immediate vomiting. That's ah, not good. As you scout the area, you see something. A few feet away, you see an animal. It just sits there, shaking from the cold. As you try to close in, it runs away. Is this a monkey? It looks like a monkey. And it disappears into the whiteness. What is that? A monkey? What is it doing on a tundra? And then a sound is, is heard. Glorious static, then silence. Don't be freeze, you must choose. Oh god, or oh, lag. Hello, I need help. I don't know where I am. I'm freezing to death. No replied. You panic and feel as close to being rescued. No, you're good. What do you mean by free? To be free, you must choose Olga or Oleg. I'll take an Oleg, please. With a side of fries and such. Thank you for your reply. Please continue. Continue? Continue where? What the flipper jabbles is happening? You feel desperate and your ground wasn't so cold. It'll probably lower your body temperature and you just collapse dead. But death is not an option, not yet. So you carry on with the radio in your deep, 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 deep pockets. You use the edge of your zipper on the overall to do a small mark. <laughs> oh, I thought you peed on it. All right, all right, you just scratched it. Okay. Oleg like cat. Wait, Oleg likes cats. Oleg like fish. Oleg's diet is dead due to hard work in a coal mine. Oleg likes music and dances there as well. Oleg occasionally dances with his mother. Is that, yeah, it's, yeah. This is getting weirder and weirder. The voice in the other end is robotic, stale, and somewhat distorted. Oleg takes long rocks, sometimes a long canal. Oleg likes water, and he never goes for a swim. As a child, Oleg lost his pet in a well. Well, Oleg is just having a wonderful life, isn't he? As the wind hits your face like waves, you almost don't feel it anymore. Shelter is a must if you don't want to die on this godforsaken tundra. Oleg has a bad leg. Oleg has a problem working. Oleg is often sad and feels lonely. Oleg's mom makes him cakes. Oleg's dream is to work as a farmer. You, you hear me? You think you're seeing something in a far distance. Oleg spends a lot of his time taking care of his mother, who is not well. Oleg's mother tells him he's wasting his life by doing this. Oleg likes ice cream and soda. I don't even try to answer anymore. So you can go insane. It's your old friend of a tree. Have you been going in circles? It can't be more than an hour since you left the tree. And your mark is still there. Please dig 20 footsteps to the north. What? what? With what? Hello? <laughs> Dig with what? Your hands? You get an eerie feeling about the tree, as if something is different. You dive deep into the hole once again, deeper than before, and your whole arm is inside of it. The tree you face is pressed against the bark. Yeah, but then you feel it. Something. Anything. Is it like a shovel? It's a very small but sturdy shovel! Like one the wait, like the one the hikers may carry to dig a bivouac. What is that? Is it like a place you crud? Whoa, 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 was it there before? No, you missed it. Did you miss it as you retrieved the radio? You have no idea where North is. So you pick one direction, count to 20, and start to dig. It doesn't take long to reach the permafrost. Even though it's a sturdy shovel, it can't beat the type of frozen helm. You have to dig somewhere else. You're beaten entire hands ache, headaches, your body aches, your everything aches. 
and then you're more or less in our directions. Maybe just a little bit to the left of that last hole. Clank. You strike metal, the metal surface of one more time to hear some of the same metallic sound. Wipe off the snow and discover the hatchway. A big handle welcomes you and you grab it, hoping it's not stricken with rust. Slowly you manage to move the handle, you open it up and find darkness inside. And a ladder. And we climb down. And now we're in a choose your own adventure book. You are in a small room with metal walls. You feel somewhat scared, angry, sad, disoriented, shocked, and other feelings you don't remember the name of. The right is a door. The front is a hallway. On a pedestal in the middle room lies a gun. Dust covers the gun's surface. You never even held a handgun before. Only your uncle's hunting rifle. It's not that different. Okay, it's actually really different, but whatever. Hey, pick up the gun. And it has only one bullet in the chamber. Okay, the right of his door. Door doesn't have an amp door. Yeah, front hallway, right door. And ugh. Alright, let's go in front. You enter the hallway and suddenly you hear a voice like, You are soon to be free. To be free, kill Oleg. Simply kill it to be free. Well, you know and I begin to squeeze the gun in your hand. Well, apparently me and Oleg is going one-on-one -on -one for freedom. Oh, gosh. Take a life to get your own life, life back. Kill Oleg. Okay, you just flashed a picture on the screen. I have a very bad feeling that it might try to jump scare me. I swear I hate jump scares. What is this place? As the hallway takes you to a small room without any exits. The chair is in front of you. Blood splatter is visible from some kind of violent occurrence. Behind the door is some kind of window. And then the voice coming from the speakers and the ceiling is deafening. Let's get out of here. So, by the window, I guess. As it seems, the window is your only way out of here as you try to break it. At first, with your elbow, we're standing on the chair. But as the thick glass won't break, you suddenly remember, oh, the gun. No. Should you sacrifice your only bullet or getting out of here? Or save it. Save it, duh. Like, you start working on the window, hitting it with a shovel. The window is thick as and barely scratched. Might require a lot of work. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. I am not wasting my own only bullet. This will work. Oh. That took shorter than I expected. Okay, finally managed to break the glass. You feel tired, broken glass. That cuts your arm, but can't stop you as you climb onwards to freedom. Good. We have the gun. You're in a room full of computers and displays. The one in front of the table is full of pens and papers. To the right is the door. Computers. Kill Oleg, cool Oleg, or some other four-letter word. Maybe the four-lettered word earlier. The computer in the room are glitchy and they don't seem to be working, but you find one that's still functional. It's hooked up to some cord that you follow. Under some trash is the radio, like lore, like yours. You look at the screen and find a keyboard. You hit enter and hear... Ah. So it displays... Uh, this place is getting me to creepies. I mean, it's only a bunch of boxes, and it already gives me the creeps. And I'm also, this. I don't know, how do we even get a map of the place? One of the glitch screens smashed up in the, 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 the South America. Look at him from Paper Max, all on South America. Is Oleg that monkey? Are we going to have to kill the monkey? That is. Ugh. In front of, as long as he doesn't act like that monkey from that movie where a little monkey tries to kill like this wheelchair guy. I forgot what movie that is. Yeah, what have we done? What have science done? Well, that's just great. Let's go right. We're in a big room. Pull tables. Pick up one and pull kills. Almost immediately put it back down. You see the tip is covered in blood. Well... It's always a great and wonderful front in the room. Let's see. This is the kitchen. Plates are filled with moldy food. The fridge is still running. And you see a zip of water. Small metal... Water! Turn on the faucet and nothing happens. But then you hear this very quiet hissing sound. You lean in here even clearer. At the same time, you pick up the weird smell. 
It's gas! We turn it off immediately. Why is gas coming out of the faucet? Nah. Let's see what's in the fridge, hoping for food, but it's completely empty. Who at least played some moldy food but cleans out the fridge? Jerks. Cupboards! Cupboards locked and won't budge. The metal is made of some seems to be more than solid. Yeah, behind you is the door. And let's go behind us into that single room. A bathroom. Very small. So probably only a few people spent time in this facility. Not that much to see. Count the three tube brushes. I think it's probably when you stay here and we go back. And then we go right. And we're in another hallway. And then we're going... Oh, left, right. I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's going from this orientation. To the left and right are doors as well as behind and in front of you. Let's go in front of us. The sleeping quarters, it feels abandoned, and it's rather sparsely dedicated, but there's only one bled. Do they sleep in shifts? Some stuff on the table. Amongst the stuff, we'll find the diary. A lot of pages have been torn out of the diary and partially burned. See what the first place says. I had such a weird dream last night, and it's one marble. And a house, dwarves, and the left pigs. I looked and saw how the seasons changed. Then it was all quiet, and I left my arms dangle around my body. Then I looked at my hand, and there was a pentagram. <laughs> Doors, pigs, seasons, and pentagrams. Oh my! All right, let's see what the last page says. April the tenth. I know we are doing out here is rather conventional. But we're talking about results of education. Crafting is weapon. Jeffrey is starting to drift away. You can pause this. I'm, I swear it's going to jump scare me if I look at it too long. So, apparently they were making a weapon and something went wrong. So, rummage through the bed, you find candy wrappers, magazine, and tone, and you feel something inside a pillowcase. That's a small key. Ooh. See what's there. Hope the old leg is not moving around. Let's go on the thing behind us. Typical desk for chairs. What kind of cabinet? Is that where the key is? Let's see, no keyhole or other way of opening. Thumb doesn't work, obviously. It's by fingerprint recognition. Okay. A typical desk with a typical chair. Here's some paper clams, some office supplies, no name in front of a page. One page can be still read October of the 19th. HQ sends a response. Our request was denied. Blah, 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 blah. Employee 0019. Dwarves seasons. Wait, dwarves, pigs, seasons, and pentagrams. Oh my. I need to write this stuff down. Wait a second. Yeah. Dwarves. Dwarves. Piogs. Seasons. Z. And pentograms. Pentograms. There we go. Pentagrams. Number 19. Yeah, that's good. Some books. And something about sociology, philosophy, and behavioral science. And psychology, of course. This seems to show some rocky fellow having... <laughs> well, okay. That's wonderful. Alright, let's go behind us into this deep warm, some filing cabins. And they're a little labeled with a name. Yeah. Who are these people? I don't know. I'm just copying their names for the sake of surviving. Let's get out of here and go to the right. Oleg! Little monkey do! I need to shoot you! You're in a very small transit area. And there are two areas. The other is marked personnel. And one is marked freight. And behind us is a long, long hallway. Let's go to the personnel freight. Let's see, there are three buttons. Th oh, no. That's kind of different. Oh, gosh. Let's go on to freight. Inside a panel, the one button doesn't spawn a small button. So that's a credit card and a key card. And it happens. With, uh, let's go behind us. Let's see, to the door is the left. But behind you is the door. And your room must have been a morgue. Well, that is wonderful. Doors, stench, number 19, toe tags. Wait, employee 19. Ground toe tags. Get off! Alright. 
Who are these people? Oleg Olga. I remember mean, those guys. Wait a second. And I'm pretty sure that's a J. Juan. Or Juan. That's how you pronounce it. Bob Ole Bob Oleg Linda. You know, I I think that's wrong already. So Something more fresh, yeah. I'm kind of skipping through it because I'm kind of paranoid. And when I'm paranoid, people die. Dart to the left. Try kicking it. Howling wind on the tundra. Yeah, it must be the place. That's the place where we went. Go back and take the personal to number two. We're on the second floor. The only one to the left is the hallway and behind you. The hallway is filled with rubble and blocks your way. The area will require a lot of energy. You don't energy you don't have in crud. Will someone try to keep someone out? Apparently. Left. Shield is shuck. And, well, we're stuck. And we're on the first floor. We're in a similar room, third floor, so there's only one elevator, and there's a door to the left. Yeah, this was a 3D first person game. This is so be a horror game. With like some sort of monster coming after you, but somebody tells me this point and or choose your own adventure kind of thing is setting me up to something bittersweet. Like I think the Oleg, it has some sort of bad backstory. It's like going crazy, and I'm going to need to kill it. It need to be sympathetic and crud. I can already think about that. So we're in a similar room on the third floor. There's only one elevator, one door left, and one behind you. Let's go check the vault, and there's a door. And there's a room with the ladder. Let's... Oh, no. No! No, don't do anything! I'm scared! Oh, the monkey's gonna kill me! Oh, the monkey's gonna so kill me! Why did we get out? I didn't mean to. As you look at it, you realize when you feel in the tundra small room, there's another tundra right beneath your feet. How many tundras are there? You hurry back to your elevator. All right. Um. To the right. Go back. Okay. And so I thought something bad was going to happen, but it didn't. We're in a small room on the third floor. There's only one elevator and two to the left. We're in a small room on the third floor. There's only one elevator. Elevator. Ah, uh, stench is unbearable. Check the seats again. Let's see some more. Bojuko. That's what I'm guessing. Something, some puzzle like that. Apparently, I explored all that I could go to. Yeah, behind you, in front of you, some filing cabinets. Yeah. Juan, John, Louis. Apparently, there were the guys here. And weren't we, were we, like, supposed to cut off one of the guys... And like, I don't know. I'm running out of material. I'm running out of voice. And apparently, we've reached a dead end. And I'm not good with dead ends. Like one time, I got in dead end of this game where the exit point was so obvious, but I didn't do it correctly, and I thought that wasn't the point anymore. And after looking up a walkthrough on YouTube, I was like, duh. <sighs> so where are we supposed to go? Let's go behind us. I don't know. All these other floors look the same, except find door to the left. Go back to the left. But what? Where? What the heck is my key supposed to go to? Found a key. There's nothing behind you. Door, ladder. Why don't we go forward? Four, a hallway in front of you blocked by rubble. Oh, of course. Fine, let's go out into the wilderness. We checked off all that we could here. 
and everything. And what the heck? Where is Oleg? The Fledgen. That is weird. I don't understand it either. So, um, where are we supposed to go? We're just taking the elevator everywhere. It's wielded shut. And this one is wielded shut too. So what are we supposed to do? Eh. You try the key. Oh, oh, here we go. This is what's big do. Scissors. Woo! Yay! Scissors! We found scissors! And I think we're supposed to go somewhere with them, so... Oh, that's nasty, man. I know what you want me to do. Oh, this is going to be gross. Alright, guys. We're going to be cutting off somebody's tongues. Look at his thumb. Oh, now you got a very... Oh, what the heck? Oh, nasty. Oh, nasty. Nasty, nasty. And we go behind us. Cabinet. Use that thumb. Plastic key card. And then we go front to the right. Take the freight elevator and insert the thing. Should you punch in the... Wait. Should you punch in the code or exit? Please enter the first of four digits. You can only fail thrice. <sighs> um, dwarfs, pigs, seasons, pentagrams, A, B, C, D, four, pigs, A, B, C, D, E, Four. A B C D E F G H I A B C D E F G H I J No, no, it's not gonna work. It's gonna have to I'm gonna have to actually spell these things right. I think I know what I need to do. Dwarves Seasons Pentograms. Oh, and I can't exit. Grant. Grand. Grandanos. I think it's how you spell dwarves. So, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. So, dang it. Get back on there, Microsoft. No pad. So, seven. Seven, four. Another seven. P. E N two. That's how you spell pentagrams, right? Pentagrams. Puzzles. Puzzles are fun. Puzzles are wonderful. There we go. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten. Huh? So, how is that? Ten. We tried. Okay. Let's try seven. Oh! Is, there's a seven! Did I write pentagrams? I meant pentagrams, so that must be a nine. I don't know what I'm thinking. If it was a pentagram on my hand, and it was awful. So, four... What? Oh, dang. Nabbit. Lou Hang, Stephen, John. Uh. Seven. Hmm.
Hmm. Hmm. So anyways, that was Tundra right now. I may go back to it and actually finish the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll admit it. I tried to look for the answer in the comments. Like, <laughs> oh, I'll go back and through this thing. Now I actually know what to do and everything else. And we'll go and see what's in store for us. So until next time, I'll see you next time. So, see ya. I'm gonna shoot you so much sniper or something. You're just a bully piece of crud. Don't touch oh, yeah. you're so oh, tough well, just because you have a knife. I love That's it, I'll show you well. Enough. Well then, let's fix Violent oh, Four. Yes, you have no Oh, there you go, you got a taste. Matt, Matt, you. Yeah.